So 1959 Sapphire is uh, another one of those hidden gems of British cinema. Um, despite winning the BAFTA for best film in 1959, it's mostly fallen out of view, even among many a hardcore cineast. Um, it's a police procedural murder mystery that features racism as the nasty streak that runs through it. Now over the next few minutes, I want to tell you about the film's themes and some of its plot highlights and how the acting is mostly great across the board and why Sapphire is ripe for rediscovery. Let's take a look. So Sapphire was directed by Basil Dearden, um, and this is the same guy who made Violent Playground the previous year, um, a film I spoke about in a previous video, which I'll link somewhere in the description below. Um, and this similarly shows Dearden as a director with a kind of social conscience. And the film explores that decade of England that was post-war, but pre the cultural explosion of the 60s. But we'll get to more of that in a moment or two. So at its core, Sapphire is a straight-up police investigation um, into a dead girl, uh, the titular Sapphire Robbins, uh, played briefly here by Yvonne Buckingham. Now, she's a student and her friends and her fiancé are all white and middle class, and it's an environment in which she seems to fit in perfectly. But here, the mystery of who she is gradually becomes just as important as the circumstances surrounding her death. Um, the film literally begins with her death and the dumping and discovery of her body. Uh, but it's not until the girl's brother arrives that we glimpse the bigger picture and how racism will be a huge factor in the case. Dr. Robin, sir. <laughs> It's very good if it comes so quickly. Sorry. So when Dr. Robbins, uh, played here by Earl Cameron, turns up at the police station, the police are shocked to discover that Sapphire's brother is actually a black man, and that they both share the same parents, despite their physical differences in appearance. Our father was a doctor, white. Our mother, a singer, black as I am. You never know which way it's going to go. So as I mentioned, the film takes us from the discovery of the body through all the steps the police take to solving a case, um, investigating crime scenes, interviewing suspects, etc. Uh, the police here being Superintendent Robert Hazard, played by Nigel Patrick, uh, and Inspector Phil Leroyd, played by Michael Craig. Now the plot here isn't all car chases and wall-to-wall -wall police action, and might be in risk of coming off as more of an extended police TV show if it wasn't for the nature of the crime itself. As Sapphire's backgrounds uncovered, racial tensions in English neighbourhoods are also exposed. Uh, throughout the film, Dearden shows the investigation through all levels of social life, uh, be it the whites-only boarding houses, um, buttoned-up middle-class homes, or the out-of-the-way black nightclubs. I'm full. I don't want a room. I've come to thank you for looking after my sister. You've got the wrong address. I take only white students. My name is Robbins. Well, the main focus of the film here, though, is the Harrises, uh, a middle-class white family, and particularly Paul Massey's character, uh, David Harris, who was in a relationship with Sapphire um, and is the father of her unborn child. Uh, his relationship with a girl of colour and how that affects his home life is a key part of the story, uh, one that plays into an unexpected and quite shocking final act. Now, the standout in the family for me is Yvonne Mitchell as David's sister, Mildred Harris, who, like the rest of the family, has a streak of prejudice buried just below a respectable facade. Get him out! Don't want his hands on my kids' toys. Don't want him near my kids. Don't want his dirty hands on my children. Tearing up my family, they're mine. Now, Sapphire's race-related plot isn't all n-words and caricature uh, there are sensible and quite ahead of its time discussions on both conscious and unconscious prejudice um, and interesting if on the nose sequence comes during a foot chase uh, through the back streets of london where a black suspect bumps into a menagerie of racist problems uh, from the old timers in a, a whites only pub to a group of teddy boys eager to give him a kick in on your way then sonny boy and hurry <laughs> And the film shows prejudice on the other side too. Um, a character, Paul Slade, played by Gordon Heath, um, a former acquaintance of Sapphire's, explains to the police that he could never have married her. The question of marriage between Sapphire and myself could never have arisen. How's that? My father would never have permitted it. Well, why not? Sapphire came from a good home. Her brother's a doctor. She was part white. And also... Quiet shout out to Paul Slade's car, um, a glorious 1949 Jaguar XK120 that draws jealous yeah, looks from Johnny. mostly white onlookers.
So importantly to the plot, it becomes clear that Sapphire had decided to deny her black heritage. Um, she stopped going to West Indian clubs and gave up her black friends. Uh, and there's talk of how she had gone white or realised she could pass for white. So by today's out-to-shock standards, Sapphire may seem quite mild. In 1959, the attitudes displayed here were pretty revolutionary and quite enlightened. Did she tell you she was coloured? No, she didn't mention it. No, I bet she didn't. But uh, you can always tell, can't you? No, Inspector, as a matter of fact, you can't. What? <laughs> well, I can tell them a mile away. Oh, I don't know, Inspector. Would you say you were a policeman? What? Well, you haven't got very big feet, have you? Now, a special shout out to Janet Green's script, which throws in some great misdirection and red herrings along the way. Um, it's not as easy to spot the suspect as you might think. Uh, we have Sapphire's fiancé, David, who insists that he loved Sapphire um, and didn't really care about her background. He only found out about Sapphire's mixed race a week previous to her murder, um, and he'll lose a scholarship if he marries her. And at one point, he even tries to remove a piece of incriminating evidence from the crime scene. Or could she have been murdered by one of the men that she frequently danced with? Uh, for example, Johnny Fiddle, played here by Harry Baird. Uh, like we saw earlier, he's running scared of the law and he's clearly have something to hide. All right, you survive. We didn't kill her. You were crazy about her, weren't you? No, we just danced. No. She went white and dropped you, didn't she? Mm. Then you ran into her on Saturday night, followed her and knifed her. No, we used to dance. That's all, just dance. Now, the film works well as a whodunit, but to be honest, it's more about the consequences of the murder. Uh, the question of who committed it is kind of secondary in that way. Uh, the film has some great London location work. Um, it's not showy or full of landmarks, but shot on real streets and damp and dark alleyways. Dearden did similar work on Violent Playground with Liverpool, uh, giving it a good sense of realism. Now, Sapphire isn't the most upbeat watch, uh, but I think it's an important film and a great time capsule of British society, uh, a society undergoing a difficult cultural shift. Now, despite the fact a killer needs to be caught and who that might eventually be, and the fact that a single crime being solved isn't going to kind of stop racism, it still leaves a family shattered by hatred and murder. Go check it out. Cases don't get solved without somebody getting hurt. You know that. We didn't solve anything, Phil. We just picked up the pieces. 